Okay, in this video, we're going to be demoing uh, some basic features of Eclipse. So the first thing we're going to, we're going to do is make a Java project. All right, so we make a new project here. And click Finish. All right, in this project, we have a source folder with nothing in it. And then the system library, the JRE that we're going to be running this Java code on, right? So that's the importance of having the project uh, because you get this association that this code is going to run on this JVM. Okay, so now let's make a new class. Right, so we can make a program, which right? so we'll call this uh, main file. All right, and an easy way is you can you can say our you know right here you can say put a main file main main method in it already. Uh, but let's create it a different way. All right. So if we do that, we get default package, right, with this main file in here. Okay. Right. Uh, now you might want to want to rename this uh, package uh, to something else in the future. Uh, so let's let's rename that now. Uh, we can say uh, move refactor and move this main file, right into a new package, right? the only package here is default package, so you could say demo, okay, right, now our class file is under the demo package, okay, and you see that it's inserted this line, package demo, in the file, uh, as well as on the file system, made a folder called demo, and then put the main Java file in there, all right, so right now, there is no main method in this Java file, so we can't run it. So let's uh, make a main method. All right, so we can have it automatically generate this main method, and let's write something. Okay. Okay. So you can save that, and then just hit run. All right, and we'll see that it prints out hello. That's great. Okay, so um, that's the basic Java. Now let's include a library and uh, look at some more sophisticated code. All right, so I'm going to make a new folder called lib. All right. Okay, in this lib folder, what I'm going to put in is some jar files. Right for this library called GraphStream. Okay. So now we see the, we have these jar files in here. So they mean nothing yet. It's just an organizational. Um, it's just we're just viewing a folder, right? Uh, but we want to incorporate these into our project. So right now, um, if we have, use a file that has um, that's using these graph stream libraries, uh, it won't work. So let's let take a look at that, right? So let's grab this example. We'll throw it in the demo folder. Okay, and we have a an error. So what is that error? All right, so the first error is that the package name is different. All right, so we're just going to change this package name. Uh, it can actually, we can either move it to a new package called CS310 or change the package name to demo. So let's change it to demo. All right, all right. So that error goes away. But now we have all these other errors. Okay, so org.graphstream is not found. All right, so that's actually in here. So let's include these. So if we Right click on this jar file, go to build path, and then add to build path. It's going to add a section here called reference libraries. Right? So those reference libraries um, are going to be the jar file and all the classes that are contained in it. Okay? Uh, so now we can run this example. And we see a visualization that we can drag and move around. Okay? Uh, but Let's try to understand this code. All right, so we can do, we can use this feature where we uh, look at the methods that exist in this example, and there aren't that many. We just have main. Okay, uh, we can also go through the file um, and view it here, but we don't know. Let's so say we've never encountered this graph stream library. We want to take a look at it. All right, so we can uh, say what what is this single graph? This is the first object that's being instantiated. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at the type hierarchy of this class. 
Okay, so you can see that there's uh, a significant amount of um, extending going on. Okay, so a single graph uh, extends a class, right, with a C, adjacency list, which extends an abstract class, abstract graph, and abstract element, and then object. Okay, so we can take a look at these other graphs. Uh, let's take a look at single graph first, right? Uh, and we need to attach the source, okay? So if you noticed, there were some jar files here that said sources, okay? So you can actually click on attach source, browse the path, and then grab the source file there and add it. And now we see the source associated with this, okay? So we can go back to type hierarchy, all right? And we, we're at the class definition of single graph, okay? Uh, so we can look at it, right? Not a large class. Uh, where are all the functions going on? Uh, we can double click on adjacency list. We can see the code for adjacency list. And you see that there's a, um, a significant amount of uh, methods declared here, right? We can um, look at get edge here, okay? All right, so let's uh, let's go back and look at our code. So, so this is making an object that's uh, essentially um, at some point, uh, an abstract graph and then an abstract element. Okay, so we're assigning it to this graph object. So what's this graph object? Okay, so it, hovering over it uh, shows the Java doc uh, that's associated with that class. Okay, so where is this text written though? Where is this text that we see? Okay, so if I right click on this uh, and open declaration, right, we can see the declaration of the graph class, okay? So the Java doc we were just reading uh, is actually written right above it, right? So underneath the import statements, the special Java doc comment, uh, it says an interface that advises general purpose methods. So we go back here. Was that what we're reading? Yep. Good. So now we've been able to explore what's going on in this first assignment, okay? Right? So now this first uh, method is being called add attribute. Right, so what's what's going on here? Right, so it's being added to this graph stream object. If we click on this, we see all the objects that have the same reference, not just the same name, the exact same reference. Okay, so if we click on add attribute, right, and then go to open declaration, right, we see that this is defined in an interface. Right, how do I know it's an interface? Uh, well, it has this semicolon at the end. Right, if we scroll up, we can see that it is in fact an interface. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. All right, open declaration again. All right, so this doesn't help us to see which class is actually implementing this when we, when this method actually gets called, okay? So we can use debugging to figure out what is actually going on during that call without having to actually chase back the hierarchy of looking into single graph and then adjacent list graph and then abstract graph to see which um, piece of code actually implements this add attribute method, okay? Uh, we could probably find it on one of these lists. So if we were searching through this, we could see add attribute is most likely on here. But as you can see, it's a lot of work. And we can do it a simpler way. Okay, so let's set a breakpoint. Okay, so we're gonna just double click in the this little space to the left of the numbers, right, that lines up with the line we want the debugger to stop on. Okay, now we can hit this little bug symbol, right, which is debug, right, and it's gonna ask us if we wanna open up a new perspective. Let's say yes. This new perspective is gonna have our call graph and thread tree here, right? Our variables in our current stack frame, the code with the current breakpoint that we're paused at uh, highlighted here, right? The current program output, uh, and then an outline of the code. So we don't really want that right now, okay? So we haven't executed the statement yet. So we could uh, do two things in the debugger. So the whole program is stopped at this point, right? We can uh, continue on, essentially ignoring this breakpoint. We can resume. We can step into this method call, 
right, which is going to follow this call into whatever method is linked to that right now, okay? And then we could step over, right, which is don't resume, uh, but also don't step into uh, and continue with the next line, right, which we this node assignment here, okay? Uh, so we want to step into it, all right? So let's step into using this button, all right? So now it ended up that abstract element implemented the add attribute method, right? So we're able to actually see uh, the call that has happened uh, and follow live what object was actually behind the interface that we were using, okay? So now we can look at the attribute that we passed in, so you, if you remember that from the code, ui.stylesheet, and then an array of values, all right? So the, the base element of this array is this, uh, this CSS tag, which is just for the implementation of GraphStream, okay? So now we can follow this code. Now we're inside this library, right? Uh, how do we know we're inside the library? Uh, we can go back to Java, so we're still in the debugger, right? We're still, we, we, can, we can go back to this package explorer. We can click this um, link with editor button, which is gonna take whatever file I have open in my editor and open up that file in the package explorer, okay? So we click this. It's actually gonna open up uh, a GraphStream core library, and then it opened up the abstract element, and I click that. So if I click this, it actually highlights this one, okay? Right? If I go to different files, it's actually gonna find those. So I went to element here, and it found element. If I click abstract element, it's gonna go back to where we were. Right? We can close this, okay? Uh, so now we can go back to debug. Right now that we know that we're in the library, we can step through this code, um, step over. Uh, if we stepped into now, we're actually going to go into the hash map constructor, which is uh, irrelevant for what we're studying, which is the studying this graph stream library, right? So we, we don't want to step over that, all right? Uh, there was no actual assignments that occurred with these two lines, right? They're just placeholders. Um, so nothing, it didn't pause there. There were no instructions to pause on, right? But here is an actual check, and we pause there. So we can look um, at what values are. So values.length, right? So it won't tell us by hovering over, but we know that the length of this is one, right? So that's not going to be true. We can, we can predict that, right? Um, we can alternatively look at these variables up in this variables window, all right? But let's say we, um, we, we don't want to leave this debugger. We want to look uh, at a higher stack frame uh, that had just, you know, w had called the code that we're looking at now. So we can actually go through this call hierarchy here and click on main, and it shows us where we were, right? So we were at this add attribute line, and we made this function call, and that left us in this function, right? And then we're paused at that point of execution, okay? So we let's say we, we don't want to keep stepping through this, right? But we want to continue after this add attribute call. Okay, right? So if we click on this stack frame here and then click step over, right? It's going to step over all the code that was inside this frame, right? And just continue with the next line. Okay, right? Uh, so this gets useful when you've uh, been debugging a big piece of code and you've been stepping through maybe a hundred lines and you don't want to kill the program just because you don't want to continue stepping those lines okay so we can continue uh, and uh, look through this uh, code here and keep stepping through it and we see uh, that different objects so let's get down to this point All right so now we're about to create an edge e object which will show up here right and we see the e which is this edge in this graph okay right so debugger is a very powerful tool okay so now, uh, let's let's kill this debugger here. All right, go back to the Java mode. All right, and let's say we want to see um, what methods we should look at. Right, so main right uh, calls many things. You can see this here. Right, so if we want to look at what main calls without actually having to read every line here, right, we can right click on it, go to open call hierarchy. Right. So this is going to look, the, the default view here is everything that, main, that, that calls main, 
okay? But we want to look at all the code inside main, right? All the method calls that are called from main, right? So we can toggle the view here, right? To show callee hierarchy, right? And it's going to show all the code, all the method calls that's, that, are, that are used in this block of code here uh, in a way where we could simply double click and look at it, right? And it'll highlight every piece of call in our in our piece of code. Okay, right? Alternatively, we can see where each one of these calls code, which is not so much in these examples. There we go. Single graph calls another constructed single graph. Okay? Uh, great. So that concludes uh, the demonstration of Eclipse with libraries. Um, all right, thanks, Bob.